Hey there, entrepreneur. Do you know your calm entrepreneur archetype? I've created a fun and insightful 10 question quiz that reveals your calm entrepreneur archetype and allows you to unlock your entrepreneurial superpower. With this quiz, you'll be asked some questions that zero in on your business style, the way you think, the way you show up, and how your energy works. And by gaining a deeper understanding of your innate strengths, preferences, and challenges, you can maximize your potential, leverage your unique abilities, and overcome obstacles more effectively. The self-awareness that comes also fosters better communication and collaboration within professional relationships and teams, enabling you to make more informed decisions that align with your natural instincts. Ultimately, discovering your entrepreneurial archetype can lead to greater satisfaction and success on your entrepreneurial journey. So just answer a few simple questions and you'll gain access to a personalized path designed to empower you to step into your role as a calm and confident entrepreneur. You can find the Calm Entrepreneur Archetype Quiz now at corinnoflynn.com on the homepage or corinnoflynn.com forward slash quiz. Hey there, my name is Corinne O'Flynn and you're listening to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I am a USA Today bestselling author, nonprofit executive and organizing nerd with over 20 years experience running my own small businesses. I teach entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and small business owners like you how to organize your business, find more time, and deepen your alignment practice to experience more calm and confidence every single day. If you're looking for that intersection between practical business advice and spiritual goodness, then you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this week's episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Corinne O'Flynn, and this is episode 21. This week on the podcast, I am talking about manifesting, and I know that this is a topic that isn't for everybody, and it took a bit for me to really just lean into the fact that that's okay. I'm okay that this is not something that's for everybody because It's something that's for me. And I know that there's a lot of you out there that feel that same way. And so, yeah, that's where I'm going with it. I've talked many times on this podcast about leaning into the things that, that I feel that resistance toward. And this is one of those things like really stepping into like the full woo, Corinne is, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready for prime time yet or if the world is ready for that. But, um, I'm here, you guys, and I'm, I'm ready to step into it. So, Manifesting. Manifesting is all about combining the power of thought and the law of attraction and the human capacity to shape our reality. Right. And I know that that, you know, eyebrows gets raised and people start using words like, yeah, whatever, you know, magical thinking and all the craziness and like that toxic positivity. But that's, you know, I don't know about your personal experience with manifesting, but I am a manifester. I see the things that I bring in to being and I am able to manifest for other people as well, which is kind of kind of bananas. But um, you know, several friends and I, we laugh about it because they'll they'll call me and say, hey, I need you to manifest something for me <laughs> because they've seen it happen too. So let's just let's just go on with all of that. Um so Manifesting gets a bad rap. I think that it's it's one of those things that, you know, people don't necessarily really understand the 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 deeper aspects of it, or they don't take it seriously because they feel like it is kind of like the genie in the bottle kind of a thing. But, you know, I'm here to tell you that it's real, you guys. And I am offering a different way to think about it, maybe. Um not different, like I am making up a new way. I'm just trying to maybe focus on a different aspect of it because I feel like most of the time when people aren't able to actually manifest what they want, um, it's because they're going about it the wrong way. And, and I think that the way to manifest is actually quite simple, but that doesn't make it easy, right? It doesn't make it accessible instantaneously just because you, just because you read how to do it. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. So. The concept of combining your thoughts and your the law of attraction and our ability to shape our reality 
is founded in the premise that the energy that we project out into the universe is the same energy that is attracted back to us, right? And we know that this is the case, right? We know that that's how sound works. There's a, I'll have to find it again. There's a really cool video, a reel on Instagram with a, uh, a science teacher, or I, I imagine he's a science teacher. He could be a music teacher, but he was using tuning forks. And he had two tuning forks next to each other and he he rang one and the one next to it that was in a different uh, frequency did not respond to it. But when he rang the one that was in the matching frequency, the other one vibrated in tune with it. And that is how that works. Like people think that they can't manifest what they want. And that's what the problem is, right? Because people think that they say that the proof's all around them. That look at my reality. Where is my million dollars? Where is my dream job? Where is the love of my life? You know, I put the order out into the universe. How come it's not coming back? I followed the recipe. Where's my meal? But manifestation goes beyond simply wanting or wishing. It is intricately tied, like indelibly connected to our sense of self-worth, which is the feeling of deserving, right? But that's part of manifesting. And it's not just about declaring that you're worthy of something or stating that you deserve something. It's important to understand that worthiness goes way deeper than that. Worthiness is the belief in your value. It's it's a fundamental principle in the process of manifesting because that is the gauge by which we measure what we think we deserve. We deserve what we feel worthy of. And when we feel worthy of it, we open ourselves up to receive the positive things that come our way, right? And the opposite is true. When we harbor feelings of unworthiness, we subconsciously block the good things from entering our lives, right? And that is the barrier against successful manifestation. And in the context of manifesting, worthiness is key because that's how we align our desires with our beliefs. If you desire something, but deep down you don't believe you actually deserve it or that you're actually worthy of it, there's a disparity that can block the manifestation process. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, responds not just to our conscious desires, but also to our subconscious beliefs and the feelings we have, the meanings that we associate to those beliefs. If you went on a research mission right now, I went on Google and asked about how to manifest your desires, you're going to find that with very few variations, most people will say that it involves a number of steps and each of them are grounded in positive psychology, mental focus, emotional alignment. And those things are clarity, belief, visualization, affirmation, action, gratitude, trusting, and receiving right? That's eight steps, eight simple words, simple things that we all understand what these words mean, right? Clarity, be clear about what you desire, whether it's a new job, a romantic partner, a lifestyle change, a new house, the more precise you are, the better, right? Really be able to do it. Get into your head about it. What is that? Belief. You need to believe that you, what you are asking for is possible, that what you are asking for is achievable, and you have to cultivate a mindset about expecting that that is something that is within your reach. And this is the step that involves overcoming limiting beliefs and self-doubt. And that is what I'm going to come back to. So that was step two belief. Step three is visualization. And that's acting as if. This is one of those things where it's like, this is why people go on experience trips. Like you go to Paris to get the VIP day at the fancy, fancy hotel and be waited on hand and foot as if you were royalty so that you can have that experience so that you can bring it back into your reality and imagine it and really get the energy back into it. So visualization is really powerful because your mind, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between your imagination and reality. Like if you are able to visualize something fully, How does it taste? How does it smell? Like, how does it, how does it feel on my skin? How does it sound? Right? How did I feel emotionally in that moment of experiencing that thing? The closer you are 
in your visualization to the reality of those things, the easier it is to manifest because the energy starts to shift into this thing has already happened. Like, I don't have to pretend anymore. I'm not pretending. This visualization is real and your subconscious mind can feel the difference and the emotions that are associated with achieving that desire start to become a thing that you have already had, right? Act as if, that's visualization. The next one is affirmations, positive affirmations that can help you reinforce your belief and enhance your ability to manifest. And it's important that you craft affirmations in the present tense and you write them down. And you repeat them over and over because this is training the subconscious mind, which is kind of part of that visualization tool. But it's already happened. Like, I'm so grateful for this new job. I'm so grateful that I found the love of my life. Thank you so much for bringing them in. Step five is action. So manifestation is not about wishing and hoping, right? It's about aligning your actions with your desires, identifying the steps that you need to take in order to move closer to your to your desires and then actually taking those steps it's the next right action and you can't you can't not do that you can't just shout it out into the void and then lay on the couch and eat you know chips for the rest of your life you have to do some of the things it's kind of it's kind of like um in the artist's way julia cameron writes you know it's it's great to make a wish that you catch the bus but then you got to run like hell, right? You, you got to do, you have to meet the universe halfway. The next step, step six is gratitude, right? Cultivating a sense of gratitude for what you already have. This is, it's so important. And I've talked about gratitude before. Gratitude is for what's happening now. I am so grateful for the blue sky today. I'm so grateful for the rain. Look at it watering all the plants. I'm so grateful for this hot meal. I'm so grateful that I have an iPhone. I'm so grateful that I've accessed the internet. All the little things. Gratitude is something that shifts your energy. Number one, into the present moment. And number two, into a positive vibration that aligns you with the energy of abundance. And that's really important too. Number seven is trusting. Once you've done everything that you possibly can, you have to trust the process and you have to let go of outcomes. You have to really understand that and release the need to direct it. I want what I want. And then you have to let the universe bring it to you in the way that it is going to serve the highest good. And that's that's how it's going to happen. So if you want a million dollars, okay, that's that's really, really specific, but I want a million dollars and I want it to come in, you know, a briefcase full of cash, or I want it to come because I'm going to sell this product a million times, or I want it to come because of this, this, like you can't tell the universe how it's going to come. You just need to tell it to bring it. And then you have to let go. So that's the trusting piece. And then receiving. The last step of manifesting is about receiving. So be open and ready to receive. Surrender control and just open. And I am here for all the opportunities, all the synchronicities that are going to help drive that next right step, all that action that you're taking. And that's all really pretty straightforward, right? Like there's the eight steps, clarity, belief, visualizing, affirming, taking action, having gratitude, trusting, and receiving. So what's the catch? The catch is that you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. And I told you that I was uh, in an earlier episodes that I've been studying quantum human design. And I'm now a specialist and I'm able to do coaching and, and readings on this stuff, which is just, it's just the coolest thing, you guys. But uh, Karen Curry Parker, who is the founder of quantum human design, She goes even further on this and she says, you don't attract what you want. You don't attract what you do. You attract what you be. You attract what you be. You are already living the life that you attract. So if, if what you're already living is not what you want, if you see a different possibility out there for you, then you need to have a shift. But where, how do you know where the shifts need to happen. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, 
Human design is a system that combines elements of astrology and the I Ching and the Kabbalah and the Hindu chakra model and quantum physics. It provides a design or a blueprint of how we are each uniquely wired. It's a tool for understanding our own behaviors, our strengths, our interactions with others, and it's a tool for knowing yourself and how you tick. And it helps you explore what's possible and why you're here in the most profound sense. And I share this with you now because the self-worth piece of being a human today is really tough, you guys. It's the work that I think we're all here to do. And knowing how to identify and then unlock those blocks that are blocking us from our self-worth is invaluable. Like, it's, it's, I think it's the work. It's the thing that we all need to be doing at all times. And this is something that I, I'm working with clients on. And if it's something that you're interested in talking further about, you know, join me, join my group on Facebook. Let's talk, email me. I'll put a link to the show notes so that you can, you can connect. But if you're interested in, in exploring a little bit more about quantum human design, like, you know, I'm all here for that. But back to how this relates to manifesting. Quantum human design helps us to understand our inherent worthiness because it reveals our unique design and potential. It assists in uncovering the truth of who we are and why we are here, which helps us realize that we are inherently worthy and that simply by virtue of being who we are, right? Because your purpose on this planet is to be who you are. It isn't about what you do. It is to be who you are. And when you can embrace that, that's, that's how you develop your self-worth. That's how you claim your self-worth back. It's how you release all the conditioning that we've gone through. And if you are a human alive today, listening to this podcast, you have conditioning. I have conditioning. We all have conditioning. It comes from our families. It comes from our, it comes from society. It comes from social media. It comes from everywhere. It comes from being human, right? And understanding your design can help lead to a deep self-acceptance and an enhanced, an enhanced sense of worthiness because as you understand more about your unique design you will realize that you are designed to be different and you're designed to be unique because you are offering something to the world that's different from everybody else and this deeper understanding is what boosts your your self-worth and as i said earlier the manifestation process is not solely about visualizing what we desire it's about aligning our energy our beliefs, and our actions with those desires, right? And those three things are critical. Our energy, which is your vibration, your beliefs, which is where self-worth comes into play, and your action, because you can't just declare your desires and then go to bed, right? You have to take right action and lean into right timing. And only when those three things are present and aligned will you see the results. So you can see how vital it is that we have a handle on self-worth and feel deserving, truly feel deserving. At the start of this year, I chose a word for the year, and my word was heart. And I chose that word because of how, for me, it connects so intrinsically with my intuition, with you know how I respond, how I make decisions, and how I was going to drive my year forward by heart. And it's why I'm talking about manifesting today because I didn't, I didn't want to, I was feeling resistance and I'm like, no, you know what? The fact that I had the push to do it means I have to do it. And that's for me. That's not, that's not a rule for everybody to live by, but I know the way that I operate. And the moment I feel resistance, that resistance is based in fear. And that means that I have to push through because I think that this is something that's really important. I think it's so important, you guys. So in quantum human design, there's something called the heart center. And it's called the heart center in human design, but in quantum human design, which is a different aspect of human design, they call it the calibration center. And it embodies an array of empowering principles that speak to all the parts of who we are meant to be. And this part of the system is universal. What I'm going to share with you, it applies to everyone because it describes the fullest expression of all the facets of the heart center. Like this is, if we were to achieve like 
100% in all the places, if we were going to be fully in all of the facets of the heart center, this is what it would look like. And it tells the most beautiful story. And the story goes like this. It says, when we cultivate self-love, when we empower ourselves, when we authentically express our individuality, when we let go of the past and consciously script our own life story, when we feel intertwined with the universe and appreciate our deeper significance and purpose, when we wholeheartedly embrace the extraordinary physical bodies that we inhabit, when we trust in and rely on the universe to support us, anticipating the fulfillment of our life journey and purpose, and when we generously share our unique selves and our resources with the world, when we trust in enoughness so that there is enough to go around, that is when we truly embody the highest expression of our humanity. And each of those points that I made were the different facets. There's the several, what they're called gates in human design. There are several gates that uh, sit in the heart center and they stand for each of those pieces. And it's, I'm so moved by it. Whenever I, whenever I see it, I, this is what it's about, you guys. This is why we're here. I think I want, I want to change I want to change the conversation around all of this so that everybody understands this. It's, it's just the most beautiful thing. And by resonating fully with the themes of the heart center, we come into self-worth without any restrictions. It allows us to align our energetic self, and that's how we attract the experiences that match with the powerful principles. And that's manifesting, you guys. You attract what you are. You attract what you are. So if you look around and there are things in your world that aren't what you desire, then you get to change those things. And if you're looking to change what you attract, reach out to me. I'd love to explore that more with truly with every single person who's listening to this right now. So. That's all I've got for you today, you guys. I've gone on for quite a bit about manifesting, and I thank you for listening and indulging me in my uh, my journey into this. But um, that's what I've got for you this week. And if thank you for listening, and from truly from my heart to yours, I'll see you next time. Remember, part of being a calm entrepreneur is developing the systems habits, and know-how that lets you know that you are the one in the driver's seat. You get to choose how you run your business and you get to choose how you work. So you got this. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Corinne O'Flynn, and if this episode was valuable to you, please head on over and rate and review wherever you consume your podcasts. Please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. New episodes go out each week on Tuesdays and I look forward to hanging with you again. This is Corinne signing off. Have an excellent day.